literally into our own backyards and homes. Regardless of whether or not one of us lived or one of us loved, that physical pain of Lower Manhattan that day, our place in the world, our Brooklyn location has inextricably linked us to those towers and 9-11. We cannot and should not apologize to anyone for how this makes us feel and how so connected we feel to those attacks. The fact that these feelings are still so strong is a testament to how much we love those who were lost that evening and what this great nation lost. When we say we will never forget the strength of these emotions here tonight, nine years later, proves that we are still doing that. We have gathered together as a community on this day, every day since that fateful morning, and has become both a healing ritual and a tradition among us. It is our responsibility to take our human experience of September 11th, 2001, and to share it, to mourn it, and to celebrate the lives <laughs> of those that we lost. So much more promise and achievements were in the future for all of those that we lost. It is our responsibility to remember the men and women who were injured, taken from us unjustly, the workers in that building the heroic firefighters and police officers who did not hesitate. The citizens who sacrificed their health in that cleanup and the care of others. Of the servicemen and women that we sent abroad to defend our precious freedoms, which until threatened did not have as rich or powerful a meaning it is our responsibility to never forget these individuals who, like any of us, had lives of meaning, filled with promise and a loving family. You have all made it possible to fully honor, remember, and cherish those who were taken from us. Your presence has reminded us that so long as we are standing, we will never forget. Each of us was given a mission by God on this great earth. Theirs was taken short. I talked about our military. I talked about our police department. I talked about our auxiliaries and our veterans here today. I talked about our military soldiers in harm's way and our veterans here to my left. But the one or several groups that we did leave out, and they're in that crowd here today, and many of them that perished that day to 343 was our New York City Fire Department. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our men and women in the New York City Fire Department. We can never forget our mission, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to thank you for your support. And we will do this year after year and hopefully the crowds get bigger and continue to remember our children are educated as to those losses and that they can teach their children and their children's children. There's a reason for this day. There's a reason, to, there is a reason to remember, a reason to pray, a reason to cry, 
a reason to love and a reason to celebrate because we are a great people living in a great nation, the greatest nation in the world, and the sacrifices we have definitely paid for. So I want to say to you, thank you again. And I want to say God bless you, your families. God bless all of those families that lost loved ones, those that are suffering still today. And to God bless this great nation. Thank you very much. We're going to have Father John DeLendick come up. And he's been a busy man today. I don't think there's been, I don't, I don't want to even try to figure out his schedule today and over the past several days. But he's been with many firemen and police officers and many of the families that lost loved ones that were Cantor Fitzgerald or whoever. Thank you, Monsignor, for the great works that you've done for us over the years and thank you for the work that you continue to do. Ladies and gentlemen, Monsignor John DeLendick, New York City Fire Department Chaplain. for a moment and share with you some of the thoughts I've had over the last couple of days. I apologize to some of my friends who've been with me the past couple of days and have heard this well. You don't have to listen again. Okay? I've been focused on the last couple of days places of honor. Where do we find people uh, places of honor? We see them on memorial walls. Every firehouse has a wall which has the names of those who died in the line of duty. We see that in fire headquarters. We have a huge board in headquarters that has the name of everyone since the beginning of the fire department who died in the line of duty. The police department has a wall down near, actually down near ground zero, which contains the name of all those who died in the line of duty. So many firehouses have separate monuments with names on it of those who died at 9-11. Now, I begin to have a little problem with this. Places of honor. How do you get on these walls in the place of honor? The only way is you have to die. You know, well that's, that's, none of us really strive for that. Or should we strive for that? But all of us are going to die. And it's inadequate to say they're on the wall because they died a line of duty. Today and this, this past couple of days, I've been trying to coin a new phrase. Is they're on the walls the places of honor because they lived a life of duty. Well, dying the line of duty is, is a moment. But they actually lived a life of duty. They lived a life of understanding what sacrifice was. They lived a life of understanding what giving was. They lived a life of understanding what compassion is all about, what generosity is all about. They lived a life of selflessness. They lived a life of commitment. They lived a life of line of duty. So I think that's one of the things I'm going to say from that one. A person died because they lived the line of duty. It's easy to die. It's not easy to live a line of duty. Today we come together to honor so many people. We honor those who died in the, in the Twin Towers who worked there and, and I can't speak much about them. You know, and, and they were, they were victims of this terrible terrorist attack. But I knew personally so many people in New York City Fire Department and can personally attest from their lives that they did live a line, life of line of duty. Their whole life was duty. And if we can say the same of those in the military today, 
same with those in the police department. Today, let us come together and honor all those around us who do, do live that life, that life of duty. Not everyone who lives a life of duty ends up on the wall, and that's fine. But well, let's appreciate the fact that those who do end up on those places of honor have done so, not because they died, but because they lived, and because the difference they made while they lived. The New York City Fire Department is strong, and it gets stronger every day. And the more I see it, the more I'm involved in it, the more I see people living that life of duty. All of us should continue to pray for them, and pray for all who are working in service positions, that they always continue for our sake to live that life of duty. This city is a better place because of them. This country is a better place because of them. And all of us maybe should take a moment and recommit ourselves to follow their example and to live lives of duty. And he's going to come up and speak to us. He